school, optometry school, admission requirements during the summer when I don't have to work on other stuff. So I can concentrate on my real major requirements during the school year. So maybe if you have any goals that you already know about, um, you can kind of work on that during the summer. And finally, like what Josephine said, um, you can take classes at community colleges in California. And if you go to assist.org, you can know if those ca um, colleges in California can transfer credits easily. talking about test-taking strategies and some of the tips here um, they're found in the SLC Berkeley website and also I'm just going to add a couple tips of my own about how to study effectively during a test and what to do during a test. So, so just to brainstorm, what are a couple of your strategies um, for test-taking? Just anything you do like before a test, during a test? Lots of cocaine. During the test, I'll do the problem, and then if I have time later, I'll do it again to make sure I didn't like, mess up. Okay, good. So, like, go over your work when you're done. Um, any other suggestions? Okay, so I'll just continue on. So, basically, uh, for test-taking strategies, there's basically three parts to a test. So, first, there's the portion before the test, how you prepare for it. Secondly, there's the part during the test, and afterwards, there's the part where you get the test back and you analyze it to see how you can improve for the future. So, during the, or before the test, um, first familiarize with yourself with the test. <coughs> and how you would do this is during class, you would kind of look over what topics the teacher would emphasize more. So, for example, if they tell you to memorize something, obviously you memorize that. But also sometimes there's more subtle ways. So, for example, teachers might go over a topic many times, and therefore that's kind of a hint for you to be aware that that is probably something that they'll test on, or there's going to be a derivative of that kind of problem. Or you can also familiarize yourself with how the test is going to be by going to the past tests. And so there's a couple of really good resources for how to look at past tests. So I know a lot of people know about um, major courses. And so on digital courses, you can look at the past exams that maybe teachers put, or that uh, past students put. And so um, that's a really good way of familiarizing with what kind of questions they ask and how they ask these questions and the type of length um, and difficulty that the um, test might be. And so on digital courses, um, just try to check that out first. And sometimes you might need like 10 karma in order to be able to access the tests. So just. Um, rate a couple of your teachers, I think you can rate about 10 of your teachers, and then you can have access to all the tests afterwards. 
And there's also um, the RCSA test bank, and I'm not sure about how updated that one is, but um, well, there's also um, the TPB test bank that I think it's pretty recent and updated, and it's made by one of the engineering fraternities or something. And basically, that also has tests. So if you can't find your tests on Ninja courses or any other sources that your teacher provides, then you can also try a TPP. And so before taking the test, first of all, just try to overview all the concepts and themes. So um, a good strategy I noticed is to just be very um, familiar with the notes that the teacher provides in class. Um, if there's any portion that you don't understand, make sure to ask anyone around you about it, or make sure to ask the teachers about it, or the, even the GSIs or the tutors. And then deal with unread materials. So sometimes you might have like really long readings that you can't finish. So instead of just kind of leaving that there, try to deal with it uh, in a more succinct manner by going through and finding the main details and finding whether the teacher even talked about uh, those portions during the test. And if you browse through and see that there is um, portions where they do mention a couple times during lecture, then read that part more carefully. And then just try to skim through the rest if you don't have time to read through the assignment or large chunks of readings. And also review um, react actively by making a summary sheet. So for example, go through your past notes and go through like the homework problems you've done. And uh, just do a lot of practice problems because in that way you can improve your skills and see where you've um, gone wrong in the past. And you can also um, just know uh, like how well you have mastered a certain skill in a certain um, topic. So um, that would be helpful. And also I mentioned the midterms and finals. So midterms and finals I realize are oftentimes very similar to the tests. So for example, if you try to go through a past midterm, try to familiarize yourself with every single topic that's on it and try to make sure that you understand the reason for um, the, the, um, like the answers you provide or the steps that you take because then a lot of times the actual test is just like a variation of that. And if you understand um, how to do the midterm by just looking at it, but you don't understand how to actually go through with it um, without the answers, then it might be a little bit difficult to perform um, the question on the actual test. So just basically try to understand those really carefully because those are a really important resource. And also just review groups are also really important. So um, studying, by, studying alone is also, um, a uh, good way of studying because you can try to have like uh, like a quieter time to um, just see what you know and don't know. But review groups, they allow you to ask questions to your peers and to also answer questions from your peers. And so in this way you can um, reinforce the information by answering these questions and also you can see the different methods of doing something. And I noticed that um, in review groups or um, just talking to other people, you sometimes see that you're taking um, sometimes see that something you're doing might be correct, but the explanation for it isn't correct. So you can clarify small things like this in order to um, just reinforce your knowledge of the subject. And also, it might keep you more motivated because having people talking and um, discussing questions is um, it's a different way of learning rather than being worked or rather than um, just doing practice problems alone. So, next one. So, while um, so while taking the test, I guess this says get into the fighting attitude, so just be prepared for the test and um, just be very confident and try to get a good night's sleep before the test because oftentimes um, if you try to stay up late cramming, you might get some information in, but during the test it's really difficult to think clearly. Um, it's really difficult to like have the motivation to keep on going when you're so tired and you just want to sleep. So also, um, when you get down your test, if there's like a lot of memorization that you had to perform, um, it's okay to jot down the information that you um, were worried about because if you try to keep that in your head as you go through the test, you might get really confused and forget the information or um, it just might not remain in your memory as, that, as you continue on with the test. So um, what I recommend is that you take a look at the whole test before you start. So oftentimes the tests, you get them, it's like a giant packet. 
And so you just have to be aware that there's so many questions to it and that within each question there might be so many parts. Um, I know that happens a lot for like the chemistry classes. So be aware of how uh, long the test is before you start. And I think a lot of you know that like just go through and look for the ones that you can answer and leave the harder ones uh, for the end. But um, also just be aware of the point values for the questions because oftentimes some of them will have a larger chunk of points and you might be able to finish that one quicker. So um, just be aware of things like that. And also um, be aware of the time that you have for a test because I remember for like 4A, 4B or the other classes, um, the time is like, sometimes it might just be like a short 50 minutes. And so just be aware of how much time you can allocate to each problem so that you can um, spread out the questions that you do like throughout the uh, entire portion rather than like working on like one or two problems in the beginning and then like saving all the rest at the end and then not having time to do the ones that you could finish. And then um, don't panic if you don't know something on the test. I think a lot of you know that there's already partial credit on a lot of the questions. So write down the information that you do know about it and try to get as much of it as you can. And I would have, um, I guess if you have absolutely no idea about how to do a certain test, you can just like, or a certain problem, um, you can leave it blank. But I would recommend against doing so because if you have any idea of what you're supposed to do for it, like they're not going to take points off. Um, or they're not going to get like negative points for having like an answer that doesn't make sense. So if you might as well like try and um, put down what you think the answer might be, or just what information you know about the subject um, for that question. So, yeah. Especially in physics classes, so yeah. you can do anything. Just throw a free ball. Yeah, you leave like five minutes for doing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> body that physics. Also, like, you used to write out how you explain the problem, like how you would do the problem. Like, well, my friend, like. He like he got more points for the problem that like, he didn't get right. Right than the problem he got right because like he like without everything he knows what to do, like what could he do? Like the the question like twenty points and he got like, fifteen points just like by like showing them like what he knows about this continent. Yeah, like what he said, like for physics, I like, guess a lot of the times if you have the free body diagram and then if you write down like the um, the forces in the x direction and the y direction, you can get like the majority of the points. And so I guess yeah, in a lot of the classes like physics or math the the overall basis of the question is more important than getting the actual answer. So then the answer might just be like two or three points at the end. So just don't panic if you see stuff like that. Just um, try to focus on getting the basics correct uh, initially. And then analyzing the test is also really important for um, improving yourself. Um, just try to see what errors you make. I realize in a lot of classes, like the midterms have duplicate or questions on the midterm have basically been like duplicated for the final. So like for example that occurred in 53 or 50, not 53 or not 54. So if you make the mistake once, you don't want to make it again twice and or a second time and have it like even worth even more points. So rework your errors and also just um, if you don't understand again again Emphasize that you should visit your instructors or GSI's office hours. And then just a note about office hours, um, there's a lot of resources you can find regarding studying or regarding like um, topics you don't understand. So first of all, there's instructors office hours and there's GSI office hours. And both of these are really helpful. Um, the professors, like it's okay if you don't understand like a concept in the um, class notes and you want to just go clarify because a lot of them that I've experienced they're really willing to just go through and push to understand, even if it's like pretty basic, in, or if you think that they'll think it's a pretty basic question. And GSI office hours are really important. So for example, for your lab courses, if you want to make sure you're doing a question right, or if you want to um, just ask about, or if you're too intimidated to go to the actual professor's office hours, the GSI's office hours are also available. And there's also the SLC Learning Center, or the SLC. So this is where you can also find tutors for the classes you need. I, I believe they have it for math and for chemistry. So, and there's also UCT. Well, UCS, like our thing we're under, offering, offers a tutoring program for Chem 4A, Chem 112A, and Chem 140, Chem 140. So like every week there are review sessions for those classes, two a week. Like they're announced through B space where like you can find them through B space. Also in chem like 
whoever's in Camp 4A, like, uh, Brandon offers like one-to-one -one tutoring service with any Camp 4A students. So like, if you're in Camp 4A, definitely take advantage of like one-to-one -one tutoring services. Mm -hmm. Because I think, uh, yeah, because he's, they're all previous students who've just taken those classes pretty recently, and there's, um, they'll just understand the material really well uh, also. You can't make it to your GSI office hours or professor office hours. So, um, yeah, lastly, just check the level of detail and skill of the test. So for the test, you can understand how the teacher or how the, how the professor is going to make the test in the future. So, for example, you can look through the test and look through your notes as well and see like which portions, course, which portions of the test were mentioned in the notes and you can kind of try to see um, where the teacher pulls their questions because sometimes they might pull it from the textbook that you're using or sometimes they don't even use a textbook at all or sometimes it's from their notes or their other um, sources. So just be aware of where the questions are coming from. And lastly, just focus on whether you can be anxiety or blocking during the test. So um, I guess a way to deal with your anxiety and uh, like blocks during the test is to just more practice and also to just calm down for the test and know that you have a lot of chances to make up uh, your grade. There's a lot of midterms and there's also the fine for that. Uh, a lot of the times can um, replace your midterm scores, so just don't be worried about one because there's always plenty of chances for improvement and there's always the, the professors and the teachers you can talk to. So, yeah, so just again, this SLC is a great resource and then just always remember that the GSI and the professors are going to be there for you. The majority of them are really nice and really friendly, so um, just go try it once and see how it goes um, before just eliminating that as one of your options. And tutors and practice tests are also available. So, It's like to survive the college and in general. Because <laughs> basically that's what you guys wanted, right? <coughs> so as well as I am talking about this, I will ask the facilitator like what their opinions are, or if you guys have any opinions on like any of these tips, you can feel chime in. So first, like first tip I want to talk to you guys about is telebears, because everyone freaks out about the telebears. This is Berkeley, everyone just freaks out. I mean, most people freak out because she's a region scholar, so she doesn't count. <laughs> okay, Telebers. Okay, so basically, like, the way they run Telebers is like, it's organized by like seniority system. So like, seniors get the earliest Telebear compared to everyone else. And also like, if you're a region scholar, like Jennifer, you get like the first day of Telebear. And also like, also like Telebear is organized by majors too. So also like, an interesting thing to know is do not be afraid to face two your chemistry classes, because you're guaranteed to get in. Like, they guarantee, they guarantee you to get in your chemistry class so you can like fulfill your major requirements and then continue with your major. So like, don't be afraid to phase two. Even though they tell you to phase one, you go phase two it. But like, the only problem with phase two is you might not get in some lab section you might want to get in. So like, phasing one it helps, but if you really need that and you, if you really need to phase two it, just phase two it. All you need to do is talk to like some person. Like, so it's like, like, birth, like some person in second floor of college of chemistry and he'll make sure you get in. Another thing is like phase two those classes with no labs or no discussion section. So like for instance phase two chem 103, chem 104, and chem 120 because they have no discussion section even though they're really important classes. You can phase two them. That's yeah. And then like phase one classes that will fill up really quickly. So like phase one, so phase one like Physics and math class will be a good idea because physics and math they have discussion and physics have lab which like takes forever and then facing one of them is a good idea because like you want to gain a specific lab or discussion and also those classes fill up really quickly especially physics because physics class has no waitlist so like if the like, if the class is full you can get on the waitlist and then like phase two all your non-major requirement classes because like you like it's more important to fulfill like your major requirements. Unless like you, you know you're guaranteed to gain like those major requirement classes. 
Also, don't be afraid to be, be on the waitlist of classes. Like, generally, like at least like twenty percent of waitlist will get in. Even though if you're really late in the waitlist, they'll kind of make sure you'll get in. Like by adding more spots. Like especially chem departments where you get that. Like even if you're on the waitlist, they will like the department will add more spots for you, so you will get in the class. So don't be afraid to be on the waitlist. Do you guys have any suggestions about telegrams? So you waitlisted. I mean, you phase two um, chem one twelve. Well, I could talk about my Chem 112A. I phased two my Chem 112A, but I didn't get the lab I wanted. So, like, I did not get in the lab until, like, the week the school started, basically. So, and it worked out really perfectly for me. I just talked to the lady, and she just put me in my lab. So, how about you elaborate on which lady? <laughs> <laughs> so, for, like, Chem 3A, Chem 112A, you talked to Lucia. And then Chem, Chem, Chem 4A and 1A, you talked to, like, that that stockroom person, the, the, the guy next to the stockroom. Robert? Robert, yes. So you talk to Robert, yes. You'll make sure you get in your lab, because it's your major requirement. Any other suggestions? We're from the audience. I would say one class not to phase two in the E100. They had to turn a lot of people away from the E100, so any engineers have to phase it based on it. So next, I'm gonna talk about general tips. So like, the first thing is gain research. So like, like as we learned before, the best way to gain research is go to your professor in GSX office hour. I mean, you get to know them better, and they get to actually know your faces. They get to see you, and then you get to know them. But during the office hour, like, like kind of ask them about the research, but don't do it like blatantly, but kind of stick it in, in a way. So ask about the research and show like you're kind of interested in the material you're learning. Also, if you're interested in their research, and like towards the end of the semester, you can ask them whether they have an open spot in their research. Or even if they don't have an open spot in their research, you can ask them to recommend you to another lab. Because professors and GSF, they have connection to other labs, not just their own labs. <coughs> so you could ask them to recommend you to someone else, which is really good. So another thing is email your email the graduate students you know, not just professors, and also not just professors because like GSI like because GSI actually just do the experience. Professors don't actually like do the lab. Only GSI like undergraduate students. Professors just like walk around and see the graduate students are doing okay. So like so basically email a graduate student because only graduate students need undergrads and then also graduate students and other graduate students, so that could help. And if you email a professor, don't just email him, also go to their, also go to their office and knock on their door and be annoying in a way, but don't be annoyed that they just like are annoying of you, but be annoying to show that you're persistent and you really care about like getting their research and you really care about what they're doing. Also when you email them, make sure like you, re you read at least like the research group and attempt to read at least one of their articles. I know it's really hard to read like research other articles, but like, just try to read one to see like, what's it about, and then like, when you talk to or you email him, you could like, show that you know what he's doing. So like, it's more important that way. So he knows like, you're interested in his research. And also, do not be, do not be afraid to give research from another department. Like, everyone here is a chem major, or chem, or like, chem major, right, or a chem E. Is there anyone that's not a chem E, chem E, or chem bio? Okay, so don't not be do not be intimidated to get research from another department. It might be easier that way, and then also like it's it's better to get. I think I feel, personally I feel like it's better to get research from another department because like you get a more broader view of like the science out there, and then it could be it could be like beneficial for you to get in graduate school because like they know they look like oh you did you like you you did research from like this department, but like like so you, you have like more broader views. So you could apply like. Let's say you, you did physics research, so you can apply physics to doing chemistry. So like I would suggest getting research from like physics department or MCB or neuroscience department or like any other department works too, as long as like somewhat related. And getting research from another department is easier because like unlike chemist chem department, like like other department like people like don't seek research as much and then so they want like more undergraduate researchers. Also, try Europe if everything else fails, because, I mean, you, you saw this in an application, but 
the, the caveat with your app is like the chem department do not use your app at all. Like most chem professors don't use your app because it's much easier to find a student if they just like ask around. So like only like department that needs people use your app. And then like I have a personal su suggestion. So like if you, if you could, you should definitely try to do game of lab de development, which is basically a research. So Hiromi and I did it do the lab development. It's under Dr. Mary Ann Roadblock. And then it's basically you guys like basically you guys basically like create the lab for Camp 4A and 4B students. You guys, you guys make polyvinyl alcohols and Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah so we were working on that. And so, we just had lab today and we finished, I kind of finished working on your next lab, which is biodiesel. So it's going to be fun, I think. You guys also work on the second week IRs and then the... Yeah. And like, uh, you tried to make the bounciest or like stretchiest like polymer or something. Yeah, so we did that too like a million times. And um, I wanted to uh, mention about GSI. So, <laughs> The reason that I got into the lab that I'm working on in under Dr. Roback, this is a really weird coincidence, is that um, during Chem 4B, so the class you guys will take next semester, I had a GSI named um, Philip, I think, but I actually went to work in Leah's section during a special project, and um, she actually remembered my name because I emailed her like a million times, and she remembered my name because she's the one who graded me for the presentation at the end of the project, and it turned out that when Dr. Roback was choosing people to work for her, Leah was actually with Dr. Roback and was like, oh, you should choose Hiromi, I know her. And that's how I got the spot. So definitely you should get to know not just your own GSI, but other GSIs within the same like, class. So maybe for Camp 4B, you guys might want to try getting to know other GSIs too. And definitely doing special projects, don't just stay in your own section, but work on your special project with your partner in a different section so you can get to know that GSI. Uh, also, like, you know, like along that line, I got my research from Marty Movenhill, the same one of Marty. So basically, like, I worked with them like last semester for Serial Future, which is part of UCS. And then, like, for the end of the semester, I'm like, oh, I'm interested in doing this for you. It's like, it's like, oh, sure. So I just like basically asked him, and then he just like let me in the lab. So that's where. Game research. Do you guys have any suggestions or anyone who's in research? Or... Okay, so that's for game research. Also, like, there are, like, so the next is topic is advantage of research. So there are, like, several reasons why you should do research. First thing is, like, it's much easier to get in graduate school or medical school if you do research. Right now, like, a lot of graduate school or medical school do, do not accept anyone unless, unless they're already doing research. Because it shows them, like, you're able to, like, because research help you to like show you like you're able to like tackle a problem differently than when doing academic basis. Because in academic basis, you just learn some stuff. But research, you have to, you actually have like hands-on experience of the subject area. Also, you learn like problem solving. Because in research, not everything works. Like in like in during classes, in research, a lot of things will fail. So like you basically have to learn like how to like analyze why you fail, how to make it better. That like, kind of like troubleshooting the things. Another advantage is, as chem majors, we get credits for doing research. So if you do research, you either get chem H194 credit or a chem 196 credits. It's basically a free A and boosts your GPA. I mean, that should be, yeah? Um, yeah, I was just gonna comment. If anyone's looking to like do something this summer, I would definitely recommend an REU program. I did one this last summer and it was really awesome. And it's a lot of them are like throughout the nation and it's funded by NSF. So if you're looking to go to graduate school later, they NSF might help you out if you can make a good impression. And yeah. yeah, so can I ask you a question? Yeah. In so can you elaborate on the name of the program? Okay. Can you elaborate on the name of the program? Are you research experience for undergraduates? And are you? you can just search are you? Yeah. So are you? Yeah, you can just search like uh there's some are you search engines okay. and they're all over the nation. So they're but to come along with that, like they can good, they can like get impression. NSF is very important because NSF give people scholarship doing graduate school, which is very important because like you go to graduate school, the the professor or like your PI usually pays for you. But if you have money, they would just accept you because they don't have to pay for you anymore. So like it 
is it free money for them? Yeah. I have a recommendation. Um, so Caltech has a really good program, the SURF program, Summer Undergraduate Research Program. And if you're a minority, they have MERF, which is Minority Undergraduate Research Program Fellowship. And um, I really recommend it because everyone is really smart and they pay you a lot of money. The last part is surviving the college. So to survive a class, the first thing is don't not be do not be afraid to ask questions in class. Like all of you are afraid of their professors. I know I'm not really afraid of my professors, but do not be afraid to ask questions in your class. I mean, it helps the professor get to know you better, like to have a facial impression of you, but also like you can learn better. Also, go to office hours. Like, it's very important. Go to the office hours. You don't understand anything. I mean, you go to office hour to ask questions. Even if you don't say anything, like you might feel like you look stupid in office hour, but go to office hour. They're there to explain stuff to you in office hours. And as I was, as was mentioned before, UCS offer a tutoring service for Camp 4A, Camp 4B, Camp, I mean Camp 4A, Camp 112A, Camp E 140, and then take advantage of those. Especially Camp 4A, because we offer one to one tutoring services. And then take advantage of ASC as much as important. So another like next topic surviving class, surviving college. So like do not do not overload yourself with classes. I know like some people might just like take classes like oh I'm gonna take like 25 units or something. But please don't do that, because you're gonna die. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Like you're not gonna have enough time for all the classes. And also, you can take the classes later. You don't have to take it earlier. I mean, if you if you do feel ready to handle like that many units, go ahead. But you're not gonna have a life. And you, another another tip is you don't have to follow like you know they post a schedule online, right? Like for college chemistry, they have a schedule. You have to follow it's schedule for you to follow. You don't have to follow that schedule at all. You can like go as far as from it as possible. So like you don't have to take some classes. 
you could take some classes earlier or later. Like all of my friends took physics later, like took physics seven A during like the first semester of sophomore and seven B their second semester of sophomore. To take like, take more interesting classes during their freshman years. Also, you could take classes earlier. So like, I took Chem one. 104 and Chem 128 earlier. I also took my physics and math requirements earlier too. And then like, so two, like another, next topic is to balance time. So first of all, do not spend your whole time in studying. So like, do not spend your whole time studying here. Enjoy your life. Seriously, enjoy your life. That's why in college, to enjoy your life. I mean, the college is like the, is like probably the, like the best time of your life. So like participate in extracurricular activities and then join some clubs. For, for instance, like having like having the UCS, which is a club that actually wants a detail. I'm also in the OACF, which is a fellowship. You guys want to talk about in clubs or anything? Um, I'm also in UCS and I'm also in a fellowship. And another activity that I do is um, at casework at the suitcase clinic. And so this is basically somewhere where oldest come in um, once a week. And you just kind of talk with them or you provide services for them, such as um, providing uh, health ed uh, workshops or providing like, uh, supplies that they need. So this is just a good experience for you to get out of the realm of just being with students because you get to meet a lot of um, people outside of like the college or through UCS. Thank you. 